Okay. FDIC insurance was never, ever intended to be uh, a fully reserved pot of money. Exactly. It's kind of like Social Security, right? My, my mom, mm-hmm. to this day, I you know, love my mom, but she believes there's a little pot in Washington, D.C. called Judy's Money. And I'm like, Mom, th- there's no pot. There, there, there's no money in Social Security. It is a flow-through mechanism. Yep. Well, then what, where happened all that money that I put in? It went to your parents and other people's parents. And who's paying mine? Me and my two brothers. And and that's the way it works. And, and that's okay, except for the little fact that when Social Security was set up in the 1930s, there were 17 workers for every retiree. When I reach retirement age, there'll be two. I used to joke yeah. when I only had two kids that, you know, they had to choose between me and my wife and I would lose. So I had to have another kid which we did. So we had a third kid. Now I'm still only, I'm, I'm one, one to one, and that won't, won't work. But ultimately there is no pot of money. The FDIC has about 4%, somewhere between three and a half and 4% of total deposits in the system on reserve, right? That, that's how insurance companies work because the likelihood of all 100% of the assets in the banking system disappearing is infinitesimally small. I'll argue it's zero, that that happening. Now, what about more than 4%? Well, we came close uh, during global financial crisis and they had to extend some loans. We, we didn't come close this time. I think uh, Silicon Valley Bank was about one or one and a half percent. So, but JP Morgan, that's another story, right? Yeah. That That's about two and a half times what the FDIC has. So if there were a run on JP Morgan, but look, JP Morgan, let's just say they're survivors.